Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. All right, I want to send a special shout out to um, LA, Los Angeles, the city of angels, and everybody all across the country who is still mourning and who is mourning. Oh. And quite still in shock over what has happened to our beloved warrior, uh, Nipsey Hussle, a brother that was doing good in the neighborhood that was so cruelly taken away from us way too young. I want to say to all the young people out there, um, look, I know this is difficult. This is so freaking difficult. And let me say it was just, um, it's just befitting that Nipsey is a warrior. Nipsey is going to supersede himself and what he stood for more in death than in life. And I'm sure that that doesn't make his family feel any better. I know Laura misses her man, I know his her children, miss their father, um, his daughter, his son. Uh, you know, it's just, it's all sad all the way around. And this is the uh, second video I'm doing to address this. My nephews, my great nephews, my nieces, I have um, individuals in my family that are not taking this very well, young people, because they don't understand why he was taken away from them so young, and they want they want some answers, and they're upset. And as elders, and as wise old crones on the block now, the only thing we can just say is, look, baby, we understand. Okay, I know that's I spent a lot of time for the last couple of days, excuse me, y'all, saying that. Listen, I get it. I get how you feel. I get what's upsetting you. I get it all. Um, what I tried to share with them was like in 1996, there was a feeling that came across the country when Tupac got killed. And everybody that loved the baby, loved him, uh, was mourning. And it didn't. It wasn't relegated to a color. It was people mourning and uh, trying to find some kind of sense, make some kind of sense of what had happened to him. And prior to that, there's a lot of us that felt that way when Marvin Gaye's daddy shot him. We didn't understand, and all of these in Los Angeles, I believe, right? I think. I think Marvin Gaye was killed in Los Angeles. Let me see. Where was... I think Marvin Gaye was killed in Los Angeles as well. I don't know. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all know I got so much stuff in this dome after so many times being around the block. But I believe he was killed in Los Angeles as well. Um, the City of Angels. It's also a city where... Um, that's that's ruled with a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You see it all over the place. So it's, it's the haves and the have nots, literally. And there's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of guys out there that hit entertainers when they come out there to perform. That's the other part of show business they don't tell you about. You go out there and you floss it with your jewelry and, and whatever else you have, you're gonna get robbed. <laughs> they, they, you know, so a lot of these parties that the stars um, have, you only know, have to be real cognitive of that. People coming in, knowing that they have money, filled with jealousy and anger and envy, and they end up killing their brothers or their sisters. And that's why I say I do believe it's a lack of money and uh, is the root of all evil. The love of money. It's the root of it. So, I don't know so much 
if that's what happened with Nipsey, with what I can tell you, I do believe there was jealousy involved. Anytime you know somebody and you've known them for a long time and y'all ran together and you end up shooting the person and killing them. Um, Eric Holder, by the way, is his name. He, 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 I mean, what do you call that? And what I want to say finally about all this conspiracy stuff, which is really crazy, is like, they like, okay, well, the government can use a shooter to go kill him, uh, to do to do this. And yeah, they, I mean, I've heard so much craziness. And I'm saying, y'all, stop it. Stop that. First of all, you know, not being disrespectful to anybody. This government ain't afraid of us. Hell, we've been they slaves. We're captured. <laughs> God, what they scared of us for? Dr. Sebi was found dead in the jail in Mexico, okay, and so a lot of people want to say that he, that, that um, uh, Nipsey was going to tell us the reason that he died, and so the government killed Nipsey, so had somebody killed Nipsey, so they wouldn't find, okay, let's just say all that's true, let's just hypothetically say, yep, that's the truth, what y'all going to do about it, yeah, we did it, yeah, we killed Dr. Sabi. <laughs> Just like we killed Dr. King. Just like we killed Malcolm X. Yeah. What you gonna do, nigga? What you gonna do about it? And so your argument stops. And basically, it just becomes... What do you call it? <laughs> just fruit. Logs for the fire. These people aren't afraid of us. Let's get that through our thick skulls right now. The only thing we have to protect ourselves against anything in this country is to, is to really vote locally. It's to get these people out, these district attorneys, these uh, 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 prosecutors, uh, the ones that go and undercharge the criminals when they come in there. That's the only thing we can do. And then guess what? Even then, it's going to be some casualty. And even then, you're going to have to reinvent yourself and you're going to have to keep on coming back. It's a fight that happens every single day. But the fact, the problem is, we fighting ourselves. We got all this killing going on. I just saw there a video with all these rappers in, L, um, in Atlanta that was killed. It was something like 2018, I believe, when the video came out. And they were all under 25, 30 years old. And it was at least 50 of them. Are you kidding me? It was them killing each other. So now you want me to actually believe that this government is so afraid that Nipsey Hussle was going to expose some things that, listen, there's a whole bunch of holistic doctors that end up dead. Did you see that? Go back and look at some of my videos. I did a, a video about, it was like 20-something doctors, I think. Holistic at that. They were dead. Nobody knows what happened, why it happened. It just is. What the hell are you going to do about it? Okay. You don't have no plan. You don't have no structure. You don't have no discipline, and you run, and you certainly don't have no affection for one another. And you run through the hood, mowing each other down like uh, dogs. And then somebody look at me and say, or send me a message and say, you just don't know. Don't believe the hype. Listen, my birthday is tomorrow. I'm well past 55 years old. And if I see some things now that y'all just can't see, unless you're my age or older. And they can bear witness for me that as you get older, it ain't that you get softer, you get wiser. You become the wise old crone, and all the pieces make sense. Y'all don't see that now because you're full of, that's why you need counsel of the elders. You need, we need y'all energy, but you need counsel, and y'all reject it. You don't want to hear it. And then again, a lot of our elders are so damn crazy, they... They've been burnt out by white supremacy as well. There's a generation of us that have failed our children. We got to walk in that. 
this dysfunction that we experience. A lot of us decided to have babies without fathers and never replaced the male uh, 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 aura or the male presence in that child's life. So that child grew up like a, in, a tumbleweed blowing in the Sahara Desert. White supremacy may be the orchestrator of all that. But there's a lot of things that we've orchestrated ourselves just by playing into the game. I had an argument, not an argument, but a disagreement by somebody. One of these persons that got extremely mad at me because I said, when your family is consist of, and this is a little off the topic. I'm just going to tell you how sensitive and crazy we've gotten. They were fighting mad because I said, when your families are all mixed up, you know, it's kind of difficult as mothers sometimes to see where your child is coming from. And what do I mean by that? A lot of times, in my opinion, when you have a whole bunch of baby daddies running around here, a bunch of them, it's very hard for you to keep up with your bloodline. That took a lot of people angrily. They got angry. And I didn't, my intent was not to hurt anybody's feelings. My intent was to say, y'all take more pride, more prestige, more dedication to breeding dogs than you do to breeding your own selves. And I'm not going to apologize for that. If I can join the AKC and make sure my dog don't get mixed up with nobody else but the same breed that she is, or the same breed that he is, and that's acceptable, and y'all think that's cool. But when it comes to your personal life, you will lay down and breathe with anybody, and you don't think that's a problem? So you got one woman that got eight kids, and each one of them got a different daddy? You don't know how that you... Listen, when your kids are about... My, in my generation, most of us was. Most of us had the same mother and same father. And if we had maybe a, a one or a, a father or two different fathers, it was not very common. We made it work just like we're making it work now. But now it's just a norm. It's just a norm. It ain't supposed to be like that. When you have all your children by one man, you can pretty much know how those kids going, how they going to act. You can see it. You can all see it through his lineage. You can all see it through yours. And then the ones you don't know, you don't know no way. But I tell you what, you got to identify a marker. But we'd rather take more pride in breeding dogs than we do ourselves. And then you want to get mad at me for pointing that fact out. There's a lot of work that has to be done in this community. And I think accepting responsibility that we got some envious, jealous, hateful, evil, self-hating people in this community is, got, is the start. Don't you remember I told you Willie Lynch said we will be perpetually miserable, not for hundreds of years, for thousands. What do you think this is? They will be self-perpetuating hatred upon themselves. You've been taught to hate yourself. Nipsey Hussle said, if I see somebody walking down the street and they walk like me, or they got a swag like me, then I know they're a nigga just like me. And I'll, I'll shoot them. I'll do whatever. I'll give them that word. Y'all got to be very aware of how we are leaving a legacy as a descendant of slaves. What has happened to our lineage? I told you also about the experiment when they had all those rats in there. And they had them in such crowded conditions that they began eating one another, eating one another, killing one another, biting the hell out of each other, blood everywhere. It was like, damn. It's probably still on the internet, those uh, rat experiments. It's the the laboratory technician grabbed a handful of rats, took them outside the box, and guess what they asses did? They kept eating each other. They kept biting each other. They kept going crazy. Even though they had all the space and they were removed from them crowded, infested conditions, the behavior could not be changed. This is what we're breeding into our babies. 
no empathy. We are breeding cold, cruel individuals that don't know how to smell, touch, receive it, honor it, and look for it. We need new software in our brains, people. We need a lesson on honor, respect, and love, and caring for one another. I didn't come up in this generation. I came up, and the music has a lot to do with how y'all think, whether you want to take it or not. Wasn't Satan the angel of music? I grew up in the era of earth, wind, and fire. Ohio players, the funk. We brought the funk. I'm not saying that we were perfect. I'm not saying that we didn't get shot and we didn't kill each other. I'm not saying none of that stuff. But the vibration and the atmosphere that was permeating the environment will still look out for your brother and love your brother. That was somebody else that did something to hurt his brother was an aberration. Now it's an aberration if you treat your brother correctly or your sister correctly. I'm going to say this and I'm going to let it go. I want to give a shout out to the brothers in Dallas, Texas, who kept on that justice system that didn't want to charge that guy for punching that woman like she was pretty much, uh, he was an MMA fighter. They charged him with the most smallest charges that they could possibly do. When they arrest us, they hit us with the biggest charges they can possibly uh, find. And this is the injustice that we deal with every day. And that's why we got to get them people out of there. That's why I say that. And we got to die trying to get them out of the office. Because our numbers are going to eventually grow. I won't be here with you to see. But as long as I'm here, I'm going to try to impart as much wisdom on you as I can. If you take it, cool. If you don't, Ain't nothing I can do. My kids ain't out here game baby. And I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way because I've got gang bangers in my family. And when I come around, they go, oh, here come TT. She's going to be talking that bullshit everywhere I go. You're better than that. The king of the planet Earth is living so far beneath his privilege. The king, the first man that God made, the warrior, the only man on the planet that's a real man is living so far beneath his privilege right now that it's hard to even, you, 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 you can't speak to him. So it has to be an intervention of some sort. And the only way that can help is the first thing we got to do is start acknowledging our dysfunction. Stop blaming everything on conspiracy theory. Stop blaming. Stop looking at all this dysfunction and thinking it's normal. Stop looking at a woman and you see she got three babies already with three different daddies. Don't you go and put one in there. And if you want to have sex with her, make sure it's not unprotected. You got to cover your loins. You got to cover your balls and make sure that that's you're not going to plant the fifth baby up in there. This is this not a woman responsibility. Men, y'all got to step up and be responsible for your loins, for your seeds, and what kind of fertile ground that you planted in. I'm going to go. That being said, you like what you hear. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.